Hi, this is Divinely Guided, reporting for SBA Presents. I'm Katie Morton. I'm an intuitive and an energy healer. And I'm Jennifer Palmer. I'm an intuitive and energy healer and owner of Nourishing Journey in Columbia, Maryland. And today we'd like to talk to you about intuition versus emotions. They are not the same. Never, ever, ever. <laughs> Although most of us don't realize how different they really are. Truth. Yeah. So we, we have to begin by talking about the mind-body-spirit complex. And what those actually represent are three levels of consciousness. We're all aware of the mind, which is our consciousness, you know, it's our thoughts, our awareness, so that's one level of consciousness. It's your logical mind, it, you know, it's the things you've learned in school, perhaps, and involves a lot of logic and reasoning. And then you have the body. Want to talk about that? Or at least that. you hope it's reasoning. You I hope don't it's know. reasoning. Sometimes it just sometimes it's just so misinformation. <laughs> Here's the thing: you can't rely on the mind or the the body. That's the hint, hint. Okay. <laughs> so the body of this mind, body, spirit complex. The body is another consciousness that you hold in this meat suit that is you. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the body is the subconscious, it's the ego, and it's the part of you that does not always act in your best interest. You know, usually it does not. Usually it acts in fear um, or creates from fear and uh, anger or a need for feeling loved in some way. It's not acting from the highest part of you, which is the spirit. And I just want to say one thing about the body. It also has a tendency towards pursuing pleasure and avoiding pain. True. Yes. <laughs> and that's not always in our best interest. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> so let's talk about the spirit, though, because that's really the one that we want to align with and to have the most control and oversight over our thoughts and feelings and actions. And so the spirit is the super conscious. It's the love that we, that we hold inside. It's that spark of the one true creator that, that makes us us. And it's um, the, the part of us that is here to follow our soul's mission. And that's a much higher level of consciousness. And that's the one that we really want to get the mind and body into alignment with the spirit. Because that, if the spirit's driving the bus, you're doing pretty well. Well, and that's the whole reason why we're here. We came here as spirits inside this mind, body, spirit complex to do a mission, that we have purpose here. And so often we get sidetracked uh, by what our ego desires are or what our mind is thinking. And so our question is, is for you, who is driving the bus? You know, for us, for a long time, it definitely was not spirit. And then we had kind of an awakening and um, each of us have different stories behind that. But the awakening is what makes you realize you are a spirit. And then you have to decide, well, who am I going to make drive the bus? So out of these three consciousnesses, who's going to lead, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and often in that process, I see people wrestling with, with the mind and the body. And so that's the, the conscious and the subconscious where they might be worried about what's their family going to think. That's, that comes up mm. a lot. And there's that fear of, um, the word annihilation is coming up, the fear of annihilation. I was thinking more of like when someone's an outcast or a par pariah that can feel like annihilation, yes. I guess. But so the, there's a bit of fear that often gets kicked up when the idea of following what your super conscious, your soul mission, what, what that often entails a lot of discomfort and a lot of catalyst. A lot. <laughs> which kicks up negative emotions. Yes. So, well, why don't we talk and then, about... And then your ego wants to run for the hills and thinks, oh, heck no. <laughs> and then you got to <laughs> wrangle the whole mess back into alignment, alignment. hopefully. So some of the best ways to get yourself back into alignment are through self-work, really, you know, looking at what is happening to you in any given moment and are you really doing what you're here to do? Are you hiding from it? Are you facing your, your, your demons within? Are you facing the fears that are coming up for you? Or are you just putting your head in the sand and, and trying to fit in? <laughs> Right? Trying to make money. And, and I've also noticed that when you follow your soul's path and you're, you're really living your mission, that it's 
like it's not about fitting in at all often you actually really stick out mm -hmm. and have to face ridicule or feeling very different yes and, and the non-acceptance is an important part of that process sore thumb sore thumb yeah <laughs> i think there's many yeah hey but now <laughs> we're at a critical mass of sore thumbs yes. on planet earth so don't worry you're not a weirdo anymore and also healing would be a really good thing to do if you're into the idea of energy healing it's really helpful and it can move you through things so much more quickly than you would otherwise true so i just want to talk quickly about the ego and the body and emotions mm -hmm. and how do you handle that though when it when it crops up and you feel like you want to run for the hills um, that is that time to do the self work that Jen was talking about and sort of digging in and see what might be causing that fear and using you know you can use your mind to sort to sort of rationalize your way out of the fear <laughs> I'm not afraid I'm not afraid I'm not afraid <laughs> I asked for this <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and getting in alignment with your spirit can help you to, to heal that fear and to know that as long as you're on the path of your soul's mission, that everything is going to be okay from a higher perspective. Truth. Yeah, so let's talk about being the witness and getting neutral and accessing your intuition. So the whole conversation is intuition versus emotion, and so... I think now you probably get the grasp of why you don't necessarily want to trust your emotions as intuition. Often they're don't. kind of wound-based thinking, <laughs> and it's something that needs to be looked at and dealt with. Um, so your emotion is uh, very different from your intuition. Um, and in order to access your intuition, you have to be able to witness your thoughts and your emotions from a higher perspective and to see that they're not necessarily reasonable they're not necessarily protecting you <laughs> they usually don't even make sense like let's say you get into a, a conflict with somebody and you're like having a, a big dust up a big fight big argument <laughs> Spisticuffs <laughs> involved perhaps i don't know <laughs> have you ever done that oh all the like on the daily i'm always brawling <laughs> But what I do to stop myself from the KO, as it is called in the fighter's parlance, <laughs> is that I will. I'm joking, you guys. I'm not that, that fighty. Anyway. She's only 5'2". <laughs> so? Tiny but mighty. That's right. That's right. Don't mess with me. Anyway, so, long story short, if you find yourself getting all fired up, a lot of times if you if you're just operating from that body consciousness that ego and the you know the fear the anger the negative emotions it's it's really time to take that higher perspective and to see that what you're feeling or seeing isn't true it's often an illusion yeah. and mm -hmm. so we can get in these conflicts with people not us but you know <laughs> maybe somebody out there I don't know can get into a conflict and they can just think well yeah it's because that other person's a jerk and they don't self-examine so it's always really important to examine where it might be your wounds talking or fear getting you all amped up and getting the adrenaline going and continuing to, to argue when maybe it's just um, a perspective shift is in order or healing a wound that is causing the emotion to kick up and that is definitely not intuition yeah. if you're in a scenario like that. So real life scenario that we had to face with our own egos versus our soul mission um, was when we were being guided very strongly to start working on video and and we freaked out, basically. <laughs> Our first videos were just, oh. no. <laughs> we deleted them, so you can't see yeah. them. Yeah, <laughs> forever gone. Because <laughs> they God. were very sad and pathetic. Uh, yeah. And we're still working on it sometimes, but it's a lot of fun. Um, but, you know, if we would not have faced our biggest fears, and there was a lot of them that were showing up through the idea of being seen on video on the Internet, and uh, so we had to heal a lot of wounds. We had to heal a lot of wounds. And do a lot of consciousness work <laughs> to see that the, the fear is not, uh, it's not valid. It's not fine. at all. Yeah. What's the We're worst? not here to worry what other people think. We are here to bring forth a message, and that is what we are trying to do. And now that leads everything that we do in life. 
True, yeah. So once you find that <clears throat> soul mission or your purpose, and if you can just use that as your North Star and your guiding principle, then when these fears come up or any sort of wounded behavior or negative emotions that are stopping you, it gives you a reason to pursue healing it and moving forward and raising your consciousness levels and to get to a place of greater inner peace, mm -hmm. hopefully. Yeah. So where do we get guidance from? Yeah, guidance can be internal or external. Um, usually if somebody has not done a lot of healing, I don't usually recommend connecting so much within because a lot of times they're connecting with the wounds and the emotions from those wounds and not necessarily a higher wisdom from within themselves. And uh, so that becomes kind of tricky because of course you want to trust yourself, but you got to know what it is you're trying to trust and what you're trying to access. And a lot of people who have not gone through a lot of healing or who have a lot of traumas in their life or heartbreak and things like that, that they have not looked at and dealt with, they're not going to access truth and uh, what they're going to access is wound. And so we usually say, okay, well maybe it, you need to start from external but working with very high level guidance, um, such as your guides or angels that are here to work with you specifically and guide you through this incredible journey that we're on. <laughs> True, yeah, because what often happens is if someone's very unhealed and they're trying to operate from a heart mm -hmm. space that it, it is a mess, it can really that's how your life is going to go. It's going to be a mess. And so I would recommend if somebody just feels like they have a lot of healing work to do and they're not able to get external guidance, it's a good time to work with a pro who can help you with the healing and help you learn how to access external intuition from guides that can help, help you to lead you along your soul's path and hopefully face more catalysts so that you can heal more wounds. <laughs> so external guidance comes from your spirit guides, angels, those who are assigned to you to help you out in this lifetime so that you can see beyond the veil at the during the time that you live in a meat suit. <laughs> now I also want to say too that you know this isn't about ignoring emotions or stuffing them down because emotions are really important and they are red flags for areas where you still have work to do and um, areas where maybe you aren't quite seeing from a higher space. And we all have emotions and they're important, but they shouldn't be ruling our decisions and driving the bus. So when you're talking about intuition and, and looking within, you know, it's just, you know, those internal emotions are definitely not the intuition speaking most of the time. So you just want to realize that and it's not about stuffing it you definitely want to go through healing and working through it all you know we are not advocates of sticking your head in the sand <laughs> but we just don't think you should be making decisions from a wounded space right yeah and the saying that I always really despise is when people say but emotions don't lie <laughs> yes they do yes they do uh, they are big liars <laughs> liar liar pants on fire right They're terrible <laughs> It's a signpost for where you need to change a perspective or heal a yeah. wound, so, but it's definitely not the truth. It's not necessarily <laughs> the truth. Um, that said, except for, I want to talk about unconditional love, because mm -hmm. the point of all of this self-work is to get to a point where you're not over-emotional and you're not reactive in the face of anything, really. I mean, you can get to a I think <laughs> you can get to a point where you're literally never upset or almost never. Yeah. It could require a really large catalyst to knock you off your emotional rocker, you know? So, and I want to talk about the raw contact. So the raw contact, please look it up on Amazon if you haven't heard of it. It's the books um, that talk about the law of one. And in those books, they say that the goal is to come into emotional balance. So if you feel a strong emotion, like fear or like anger, the practice is to experience the opposite emotion equal in, in intensity. So if you feel really angry about something, just go ahead and sit back and allow yourself to feel it, but then go ahead and work on feeling the opposite of emotion to anger, which might be peace or love or feeling kind or generous with somebody. Um, and if you practice that enough, the theory is in the love one books that you will balance your emotions so that you can 
be in a state of unconditional love no matter what it is that you're going through. That sounds pretty nice. Yeah, it really does. Groovy. Hmm. Hmm. All right, well, let's talk about how do you access your external guidance. Um, internal is usually pretty easy when you're in a healed space. You can quickly and easily access that. External is a little bit harder, but I usually prefer to talk to my guidance team about things, especially if I feel like it's harder to get neutral or if I'm struggling at all with something or just need an, an outside uh, vision of what's happening um, within. And um, accessing it, there's different ways you get messages and most of us get, I'd say maybe even all of us get messages, we just don't realize that we do. So if you're working on uh, increasing your intuition, uh, you can see things, you can hear things, you can know things, you can feel things, you might even smell and taste them. <laughs> um, so if you happen to be someone who gets visions, uh, you're probably getting guidance. And I know so many people who come through our classes who are trying to increase their intuition and they think they don't have any, but they're getting visions all the time. And I'm like, well, there you go, you're getting guidance. You just need to figure out what it's trying to tell you. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah, true. And um, often when you're trying to develop your intuition, I always say meditation mm -hmm. is going to be your best friend. And if you're not a meditator, start out with something small like five or ten minutes a day. You don't have to make it this big, long, torturous event. <laughs> Do it so that you can be consistent about it. And if you're still trying to figure out this, the whole consciousness thing and how to be a witness, Meditation is really great for that because it's about just observing the thoughts. A lot of people mistake meditation for trying to shut down the thinking and then they sit down to meditate and their brain starts thinking. They think, oh, I suck at this. I can't do it. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> and the point is to observe the thoughts and to maybe question them. Are they true? Are they helpful? Um, and then eventually when you journal actually in conjunction with that and you kind of get all the crap out of your head onto the page and if you do that often enough over time you are going to get to a point where your thoughts are your brain's going to realize they're pretty invalid and then your mind is going to still enough that your guides can get through to you mm -hmm. and so that you can hear them you can't hear them if you're constantly grinding on your thoughts when you dump your thoughts out into a notebook and you actually look at them you can see like that's not important. Yeah. <laughs> Most people confuse every thought they have with like, oh, that's important. No, it's not. <laughs> no offense <laughs> to any of us. <laughs> but yeah, write it down, meditate, still your mind, and then the guidance can come in. Excellent. And before you do so, we are big believers in setting up a sacred space. So if you're already meditating and already trying to get guidance, but you're not setting up sacred space, you're honestly setting yourself up to receive information from beings who are all around us all the time, you know, whether they be spirits who have passed or intergalactic, you know, consciousnesses from beyond. You know, there, there are so many different types of beings that are trying to connect. Some mean well and some want to give you wisdom and a lot of them don't. So it's important to set up the sacred space to make sure that you're getting the guidance that you're looking for and um, not getting interfered with. Right, so you can do that via a prayer or visualization and the goal of creating sacred space is that you want to clear your space of spirits and then invite in and be specific about who you want to communicate with. And for a beginner, it's a good idea to pick those who you know are going to be good, like an ascended master, for example, like Jesus or Buddha, but pick a being that you resonate with. You want to choose somebody that is uh, polarized to the positive path of ascension in service to others, honoring the law of one and the God of all gods. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, I think a lot of people just sort of meditate or they want to tune in and they just want anything, like any contact would be exciting. And um, that's a terrible idea. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> so be picky. I remember I had a, a client once I was coaching on uh, intuitive development, and she was such a nice person that she felt bad <laughs> limiting who was allowed to contact her. And I had to say, like, pretend that your, your mind, body, spirit complex is like, 
it's the hottest club in town and everybody's trying to get in and you have to be a bouncer with a red velvet rope and saying like are you on the list because th these spirits would show up and be like oh hey it's uh you know Jamel <laughs> or whatever <laughs> and she'd be like oh okay and I'd say no like do you know who that is? No, <laughs> they're not allowed in. <laughs> so your sacred space is sacred and it's not open to just any spirit that, that wanders along and tries to get your attention because they will try to get your attention. <laughs> and that said, sometimes we call in our loved ones and they're, while they usually mean well and not always, there are definitely, I've seen situations where loved ones come in and they have their own agenda and they will steer people away from what it is they're meant to be doing. Um, but even if they do have the right agenda and they're just there to support you, a lot of times the higher wisdom is not going to come through them. Uh, they often seem to show up more as a supportive uh, contact, um, someone there to give you love and support and confirmation, uh, more so than the higher wisdom. So we usually recommend if you're looking for higher wisdom to please connect higher um, in consciousness levels as far as that goes. Yeah, like an archangel or, mm -hmm. you know, again, the deity of your choice. Yes. <laughs> but not just any yokel who's dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're all alive. I don't know. We're all alive. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, on that note, if you would like to find out more about us, you can go to nourishing-journey.com or on Facebook, Nourishing Journey Columbia. Or you can find me on katymorton.com or on Facebook. I'm at facebook.com slash katymortonauthor. And we do lives every Thursday night for the most part um, at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on our Facebook accounts. Correct. So find us and we do free readings for yeah, you. Yeah, that's yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. So thanks for watching. All right. Bye, guys. This is Divinely Guided. Reporting for SBA Presents. Take care. There is a secret. Answers to mankind's most important questions. Who are we? Why are we here? What is our destiny? All will soon be revealed. Join Corey Good, David Wilcock, and Jordan Sailor on a journey into the unknown. Reclaim our future. Available everywhere, November 19th. Thank you for watching this Fear Being Alliance channel. Make sure you click on subscribe and smash the bell to make sure you're receiving all the new content from the Fear Being Alliance YouTube channel.